What's up, everybody? You're listening to Uncharted on Boss FM. I'm your host, DJ Robin Hood, here with Ari Vox. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm so fantastic. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Ari Vox is a DC native who's been performing and writing music for years. Previously known for her jazz and neo soul vocals, she now focuses on writing music that is authentically her, transcending genres. And who has been some of your influences in doing this? Um, I would say my biggest influences are kind of like dream pop, new wave, and shoegaze artists of the 80s, like Cocteau Twins, uh, The Cure, uh, stuff like that, and some more modern stuff uh, like Zero Seven and Image and Heap. Amazing. So what have you learned <clears throat> about the music industry from your career as a singer, songwriter, composer, and producer? What have I learned? Yeah, what have you learned? Um, I guess my biggest thing that I learned is that uh, if you want to make it, be successful, and survive, you need to learn how to do everything yourself <laughs> and uh, not put so much stake in people around you. Does that sound bitter? <laughs> no, it sounds realistic. <laughs> it's like, you know, people aren't going to do things for you. You need to do everything yourself. That's why I, I write. I record, I learn instruments, uh, mm -hmm. learn how to, and I book and I manage and I do everything myself because other people um, can let you down and that's not nice. Mm -hmm. What's your creative process when you create a song? It's different every time really. Um, sometimes it starts with just an emotion, a feeling, a thought or idea, and then I just sing and whatever comes out, I just work with it from there. Or sometimes I'll mess around with some chords on piano or guitar and write lyrics based on that. But it's really different every time. Um, but I have to kind of be in a good creative mindset. Mm -hmm. Do you feel more comfortable with a band or solo? Uh, when it comes to live performances? Yeah, we, yeah, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, when it comes to that, um, I do prefer to be able to just focus on singing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not the best instrumentalist right now. So when it comes to accompanying myself, I could do like a, I'm comfortable with like a short set. But if it's like a longer thing, I will hire some people to play in a band for me. Mm -hmm. Have you had a difficult time finding venues to perform at recently just due to COVID-19? Um, yes and no. I'm not really looking for live performances right now. Mm -hmm. I kind of, since I have so much going on behind the scenes, I have several different projects and I do everything myself. I'm not really worried about performing live at this point. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I have, I'll have like a couple things, like I'm planning an album release party in, um, in the fall for a new EP I have coming out. But other than that, it's like, I don't really need to perform live. I kind of spend most of my efforts uh, on the internet and like pushing my music that way to try to reach people all over the world. And that outlet of being, of being able to use the internet, do you find that useful uh, when you're connecting with other artists you may want to collab with? Um, yes, definitely. Because um, I mean, especially because COVID, I haven't been out much to like, uh, connect with other musicians. And also DC is a really small city mm -hmm. and um, there's only so much here. So it's nice mm -hmm. to be able to be exposed to a world of different people and attitudes and genres and and get a new you know outlook on music that way um, just from the comfort of my own home. Do you have any plans of perhaps moving to a city where you might have some more opportunities? Um, most likely no, because mm -hmm. uh, even though right now, definitely in my opinion, and I think a lot of musicians and artists in the area will agree, the DC music scene is kind of like poopy right now, especially after like all these venues have closed and mm -hmm. you know, there just isn't enough money and like respects to go around, you know, from local venue owners uh, mm -hmm. to have the music scene thrive right now. But my plan, because I was born and raised in this area, is to 
eventually acquire the resources and connections to help be part of the revival of the DC music scene. So like I do have plans in the next 10 years to open uh, a couple of venues actually. Would you say that before the pandemic hit that the DC scene was blooming? I would not say that. I think mm -hmm. that it has been um, on a slow decline, I think. Um, yeah, but I think it kind of, things come in waves. I mm -hmm. think it's going out in DC, even like a couple years ago, you go out to the jazz clubs, you go out, the only like nice venues that there are that are taken care of are like the huge ones. I mean, 930 Club isn't gonna go away. Black Cat, mm -hmm. I'm glad, survived, <laughs> but yeah. like, like Places like the Anthem, that's not going anywhere. It's like a huge freaking stadium. But when we're talking about smaller venues, I mean like Twins Jazz Clothes, mm -hmm. Blues Alley's up in the air right now. Um, DC9 survived, that's good. <laughs> but- um, oh, and, and of course there was um, Cavern, what was it called? It was-, it was the, it was Bohemian like a, Caverns. Oh, Bohemian was amazing. Yeah, I, I think it was before the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. I know, I but know. It's look, a lot of these places that were like beloved in DC, you go there all the time for the good music, but there were holes in the wall, man. There was mold, there were literal holes in the wall, service is <laughs> trash. Like, uh, <laughs> like it's just it's just a reality. And as the city becomes more and more gentrified, more yuppies moving mm -hmm. in, they don't mm -hmm. wanna go to the hole in the wall. So they're not gonna spend their money there. And yeah. as a result, the music scene dies because of it. So, I mean, I feel like there needs to be some sort of balance and some sort of marrying of good music and good atmosphere. <laughs> I, I would totally agree with you. And I'm really glad that you want to make that happen and s stick around and really show what you've got. I really appreciate that. I If you created a venue, I would be there all the time. <laughs> like, I know Ari. Hi, free, free drinks, right? Yeah, I got you. I'll save a table for you. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. So um, my, my next question, it kind of has to do with this. Do you have any collaborations that you're excited for this year? I do. Um, I have a really big project, an extravaganza coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an extravaganza, girl. Like, So I'm collabing on this song with this, I don't know if you know him, he's a producer and a guitarist named Sam Ojalvo. Um, mm. He went to Omega Studios, so I met him through that crowd. Um, but yeah, he does a lot of like lo-fi chill hop stuff. And then is also like kind of a jazzy bluesy guitarist, but we made, we're working on this song together. That's nearly done. We're shooting a music video for it um, next week. And I've made choreography for it. And I've hired like a bunch of amazing artists and performers. And it's just gonna be like a fabulous thing, which I'm really excited about that. But that's all the information I have about it right now. Oh, okay. Keep, in the, <laughs> keep it on the low for right now. Um, how, how do you challenge yourself as a musician to get better? I don't. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> um, how do I challenge myself to get better? Um, I guess I just throw myself into situations that force me to do new things and get better at them, just like the pandemic has done for me. <laughs> uh, like just so I had a I played a so far sounds show uh, a couple weeks ago. And I really wanted to play bass and sing live, which I had never done before. <laughs> so I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it and hope for the best. And you know what? I did it and I didn't mess up that bad. So that's wow. what I, I work well under pressure, I think. How long have you been playing the bass? I mean, I've, <laughs> uh, I've been playing, I, I played guitar since I was little. So I mean, mm -hmm. bass isn't that hard once you know guitar. Um, but you know, just the past year, I've really been doodling on it. So like a lot of the songs that you hear, I, I'm playing bass on, like in my new EP, uh, that I'm releasing in the fall letters to myself. Um, I play all the instruments on it, except for drums. <laughs> That's awesome. You're like a one man band. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what genres of music do you listen to, to, uh, find inspiration? What do I listen to? Uh, really mm -hmm. depends on the mood. Uh, either 
like old jazz or soul uh, or like Motown stuff or uh, lo-fi shill hop down tempo electronica mm -hmm. <laughs> or um, K-pop or, or 80s like new wave synth pop and stuff. It's all over the place. Do you think that as an artist, as you grow, literally as you grow and as you progress and change, big and strong, yeah. your your sound will also change with that. Um, I think so. I don't think too much though, because mm -hmm. I um in the past few years of songwriting for myself, my solo project, and also uh for other people who commissioned me or for my jazz band sweet something uh there's always you can tell that it's my song i think if you're a musician you can always tell there are certain like tricks i constantly use certain chord changes or certain type of it's, it's i have like my signature thing which i don't think that'll go away mm -hmm. so no matter what genre i'm writing for there's always like a hint of my flavor it's hard to describe though cool what's it like being a female singer in the music industry um well nothing crazy has happened to me yet because i'm not famous so i haven't like you know been abused by any uh you know dj Khaled's or anything <laughs> <laughs> uh maybe that'll happen someday cool <laughs> that's terrible um <laughs> but uh it's chill. I mean, I have experienced some like ickiness from like people who reach out to work with me, but then they actually just want to get in my pants. Oh, um, but it's like, that's going to happen with any career you get into as a woman. So it's something that I've kind of accepted. It sucks ass and I'm going to do everything I can in my time on the earth to help change that kind of mm -hmm. attitude. But mm -hmm. It happens and it's disgusting. So, <laughs> what do you feel like when you're <clears throat> singing live in front of an audience and people are, are really enjoying themselves and um, and really look up to you as a singer and as a performer? Wait, what? People look up to me? <laughs> yeah, I, I I look up to you. You're like a great singer, you know. Uh, <laughs> um. Well, sorry, I'm trying to catch this like natural light that's <laughs> running out of light here. Uh, I don't know. I'm. Uh, I never know how to take compliments um, because I don't think I'm that good. I feel like I'm. I'm a good songwriter. I don't, um, and that's what I want to be recognized for. I don't think I'm that good of a singer. I don't think I'm a good instrumentalist. Um, so I kind of just like don't agree with compliments that I get. <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm going to stop making music, but um, yeah, I don't know. The only thing I'm good at is songwriting. I'm like a decent singer. <laughs> what else are you interested in um, besides music? Um, well, it's my well, I guess started learning how to roller skate. That's cool. It's cool. I'm very bad at it. My balance like sucks ass. Um, <laughs> I am, I play old video games. I guess beat some ass in Super Smash Bros on the GameCube yesterday, actually with the producer I'm collabing on the song with, we finished a session and he was like, oh, you don't want this smoke. You don't want to play Smash with me. And I'm like, no, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I killed him like 12 times. Oh, but, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I like to dance and I like to, um, I don't know, drink. <laughs> Have a good time. Yeah, I like to hang out with my with my cats. They're cool. Nice. Are you still working with uh, Sweet Something? Yeah. Um, so Sweet Something, we're no longer. I'm no longer pursuing original music with Sweet Something because it's just too hard to mm. wrangle that many people together, and you know keep them in line. I have too much to worry about. So with Sweet Something, I'm just still doing jazz gigs, like, but to make money, honestly. Like we do weddings and cocktail hours and stuff like that, which is fun sometimes. 
but obviously I don't want to do that forever. I always enjoy when, um, when you guys perform together, it was a good show. Yeah. And like some of the music, probably most of the music that we used to perform live, that was like my original stuff. I will eventually release. Um, Cause they're, they're my damn songs. I'm going to do what I want with them. So, you know, I may probably actually next year I had plans to release an EP or short album with some of those sweet something songs with more of that neo soul sound, but with a little bit of like a, a dream pop twist. Cause that's kind of the direction that I'm going. Dream pop twist. Nice. Yes. Dream pop. Cool. That's awesome. Um, based on your experience, what makes a great sound engineer producer when you're in the studio recording? Okay. Someone who, listens to me and my needs and well more than listen just communicate communication is the biggest thing no matter who you're working with uh if they can't tell me what's not working then how are we going to make something cool you know uh that's the biggest thing and also just someone having experience just makes the fucking world of difference because i mean age doesn't matter you can be a young guy and be just crazy talented at what you do naturally or just you just put in the time but if people mm -hmm. don't have the experience in doing exactly what i want to do then it's not worth working with them how has your music evolved from the beginning to uh current it's got more polished mm -hmm. um because I care more now, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. This I'm getting older, and I'm getting. Uh, I don't know. I'm getting saltier, and I'm getting bossier. <laughs> and you know, I'm not afraid now to just. Uh, to to make it known that things. Aren't what I want. Yeah. Whether it's directed towards someone else or even directed at myself. Mm -hmm. So like I've learned to not settle for things anymore. Uh, to speak up, to say yeah. something. Yeah. Otherwise your dreams are going down the drain. <laughs> you you, yeah. you no, know, if you can't communicate that. Yeah. So being, um, yeah, be, having boundaries, being independent. Nice. Um, where do you hope to be in a year from now? In a year from now, uh, have moderate success from, I have a lot, a lot of releases planned, a lot of really, really good stuff and a lot of solid opportunities on the horizon. So I'm hoping something pops off somewhere and I can actually start making money from like my original music. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I also hope to be, uh, more involved in the DC music scene uh, and like booking shows for other people and, um, you know, on the road to making the connections I need to open my own business. Fantastic. Well, that brings us um, to the last question of the show, which is, <clears throat> could you just say your social media handles? They're, I know they're here at the bottom of the screen, but just in case someone uh, needs to hear them, like. Uh, from the uh, podcast that will come out. Uh, where can people find you? Yes, I would love to do that. Uh, my <laughs> social media. So you can find everything you need on arivox.com. And that's boxes and vocals, but two X's. One is not exciting enough, and three X's is too exciting. Uh, but uh, arivox.com or on Instagram at ari.box. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we go? Um, I'm, oh, I guess podcasters want to see, but I'm wearing a fabulous pink wig because uh, my D and D buddies are coming over shortly and we're cosplaying tonight. Fantastic. Have a good night. <laughs> you too. Bye. All right.